Hello, people. We are today actually very happy to have Scott Shepard here with us, all the way from the United States, who is curating the Flower Podcast. Um, and I mean, we have already heard from wonderful, wonderful floral designers what amazing job you are doing for your industry, actually, in the States. So we are very, very grateful that you took the time to speak to us today. Um, maybe for the people who who have not really checked in what is the Flower Podcast and maybe also how you started, that would be sure. um, a great introduction to what you do. Sure. Can you just tell us a little bit more about it? Absolutely. Thank you. First, thank you for inviting me. What a, what a treat. You guys have had amazing people from all over the world on your um, channel here. And uh, well, how fun to join you. Um, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so in Atlanta, I live about a, an hour outside of Atlanta and mm -hmm. we have the flower podcast and the flower podcast basically, uh, is my attempt to reach out to floral designers, flower farmers, people that are involved in the floral industry and tell mm -hmm. their stories because number one, um, I feel like in our age of social media, you know, we, we rarely get the opportunity to go deep and actually hear these stories um, right. and to learn from the experiences of other people. And mm -hmm. it's just um, there's so much wisdom and the experience and the knowledge. Um, and and it's just it's just been a great, great journey to be able to uh, connect with people all over the world just like this and. Uh, share their stories and to get to know these people. I mean, the floral community, as you probably know, is already so small. It's like it's a global right. industry, but yeah. yet it's amazing. You know, all it takes is one small trip and everyone knows everybody. So we're connected somehow. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but thank you again sometimes for having you're, Yeah, you're you're wonderful. Welcome. Sometimes we are really surprised when we think like, there's people so far away, like from here to America. And then like all of the sudden you think like, oh, wow, they know about you or they know each other or like how they can know each other from the other part of the world, you know? And um, and it was quite, um, we are actually very happy to have today your story because usually you tell stories. And today we are happy to get your story. And, uh, and I think I, I I still have to say that I'm very, very uh, grateful that the first chat we had a couple of days ago, just two o'clock at night, right? Uh, when I wrote you something and all of a sudden, you <laughs> here you are, you just like instantly found me and we had a, we had a night chat and it was so amazing. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit maybe about like like how you started, how how that all has has started, like how you came to the idea to do that, and also sure. when maybe yeah. it would be interesting, like when when did you like start to do that? Sure, sure. Well, you know, it's so interesting that with the whole coronavirus situation, how many people have all of a sudden you know, like this, like doing lives and doing, you know, getting out there and, and doing design classes and things. But, you know, a couple of years ago, you didn't see this that much. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I said that I live about an hour outside of Atlanta. Well, I commuted into the city every day and I would spend roughly three hours a day commuting which is a chunk of time. And mm -hmm. I got tired of radios. I got tired of music. I listened to books online. And finally I got into listening to podcasts. And then it was like, once I got into podcasts, it was like, there, there's this gigantic vault of knowledge. And it didn't matter what you were interested in. If it was a TV show or if it was you know, some kind of crime mystery, if it was flowers, there was a podcast for everybody, it seemed like. And so I had listened to a lot of the podcasts that were out there and I enjoyed them all. I mean, they were all great, but you know, sometimes they would interview somebody that I knew, that I knew personally. And I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so much more to this person than they were, you know, they unpacked. And I was just like, you know, at some point I just, you know, I was talking with my family and my wife and, you know, we just, toyed with the idea and and it was just like why not me why why not me why not start a podcast and so mm -hmm. it's been a little over two years 
um, we started and it took us probably about six months to get all of the pieces in place. Uh, and then we launched in July of 2018. And uh, a lot of the very first guests were customers of mine or friends that I had met over the time. And, and over time that grew into uh, just people literally all over the world. And I just, I don't know, I just, I feel like because I was in, and I'll share this, you know, I worked in the wholesale end of the mm -hmm. industry for almost 27 years. And so, and wow. it's so funny because with some people, the old timers who have been doing this forever, you know, they're like, that's nothing. I've been doing it for 40 years or whatever, 50 years, you know, and it's kind of like, well, I understand, but I feel like it's a chunk of time. And then there's people that are brand new. And so it's just, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm, at the right time in the right place to yeah. really kind of be able to reach out. But so many of my customers, you know, I helped through making decisions for events or choosing flowers or, um, you know, kind of planning different things for them. Um, and so I just, I don't know. I just kind of felt like I had something to offer and I wanted to help other designers and, um, and then maybe that's one reason why when I interview guests, you know, I have a different perspective because um, I've actually grown flowers. Uh, and so, cause you know, I didn't have enough to do, so I had to pick something else. I mean, of course I could have done any of it without the help of my family. And so, um, you know, we grew hellebore, we grew hydrangeas, we grew zinnias and solution wow. and cos. You know, we grew a lot of annuals. We, we we grew a lot of flowers. And so, so when I'm talking with a flower farmer, it's always great because I get to kind of, uh, no, I know, my word would be yeah, like, yeah. Language. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And so, I, and I just get passionate about it because I still love that part of it. And then when I'm talking with a wedding and event designer, you know, I've worked with those people, you know, those the, that group of our industry so closely for so long that, um, you know, I, again, I'm like, I, I'm sensitive to their pain points. I'm sensitive to their challenges because I know, I mean, I freelance and help with weddings sometimes. And it's kind of like, you know, I've been in those trenches and I identify with them. And so, um, oh, and then, you know, also being a buyer, because I know you guys do a lot of buying too, on top of everything you do. Um, you know, I've been able to make friendships all around the world. Um, and, you know, with growers and brokers or, you know, shippers and, uh, and I don't know, I guess I'm just very sensitive to every step in our chain. And I have a unique connection with every one of those links. And it's really, it's been an honor. You know, it really has been an honor to just kind of, you know, tap into that, share these stories and, um, and you know, impact people's lives. Because there's a lot of people out there that struggle, that yeah. they feel very alone, especially now, yes. but even before yes. now, yeah. you know, when you're a, uh, when you're in business by yourself and you're the boss and you're the person who has to do the, um, you know, hiring and firing and buying flowers and executing, you know, sometimes you feel very isolated. You feel very alone. Yes. Yes. And when yes. you can hear the stories of people that have had the same situations you don't feel so alone anymore because you're like oh wow they have the same problems they have the same struggles yeah. surprisingly um, they have the same problem <laughs> yes well i mean yeah and so i don't know it's it's just um it's just been really special and um it's it's been a joy so i i can totally understand where you're coming from yeah. because a little bit of our journey is is Almost similar mm -hmm. because we started as an event company and then we like by by accident, honestly saying, we came into the into the flower wholesale. Um, we started with one rose farm and then it grew from there. So now we import flowers from all over the world. We even export flowers out of South Africa, and um, and we we got to know a lot of people and exactly. What you say um we when we started this idea piece of a puzzle stories because Alfie mm -hmm. said don't we are all a piece of the puzzle and and when one actually piece is missing we are not complete and um so we reached out first to people that we know i mean that's that's natural, the yeah. natural thing you know and then like we haven't done this for so long i mean like weeks or something right we, we, yeah, we're still learning but we have spoken i think so i have no idea but it feels like a hundred people 
people. And um, and one guides us to the other one. You know, there's people, they say, um, maybe uh, we can go to reach out to those or to those. They have an interesting story. And so um, we we also like, like the, the net, networking culture in America yes. and 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 I I really want that to, to be transported into our industry because here in South Africa or maybe in Africa is not such a culture yet um, and and I like to hear these stories where people work together and without fear without jealousy just for the good of everyone you know right absolutely so yeah, so so just like to, to complete, I think what you wanted to say is that because we have this event background, we also understand our clients yeah. much better because a lot of people are like obviously doing events. And here in South Africa, and that's maybe interesting um, for you, we have about 80% event florists opposed to 20% like flower shops. I, really? I, like, I believe that in the States, like it's not it's not so drastic, like it's a bit more balanced much more flower shops corner shops that sell flowers um than um than event florists but for us that is like our key to actually also speak the same language um but um, just in terms of in terms of your um your podcast so do you have a podcast or a story which like really struck out where yeah. you say like you have now two years uh i'm sure i've spoken to like a lot a lot of people but something where you said wow like i could really make a difference because by the end of the day while we are also doing this now during lockdown is we want to bring inspiring people to like everyone's living room you know kitchen table like wherever they are right now and we hope that we can inspire someone just by listening to someone's story so do you have like through the flower podcast like really something where you say I could really make a difference I, or I could really, really help someone um, to make a change or is it more than one? I don't know, but like, just to hear like, like from your experience would be great. Sure. Well, I think to answer your question, I, I feel like there is, first of all, I want to say, I love the, the title of your series involving the pieces of the puzzle because um it, it it paints such a great picture that we are all important right that we all have a purpose mm -hmm. and yes. without each of us um you know if, if one of us if we're, we're, you know if we're not if we're not doing what we're meant to do then that puzzle's missing a piece and <laughs> and so i say that to say that with these episodes i know I, I always i always catch myself because i always feel so crazy and stupid sometimes when i start every episode about saying how excited i am for the guests we have this week because i think i say it every single time and <laughs> you're kind of like well how can you be just this excited for i mean and it's kind of like but it goes back to just that puzzle you know mm -hmm. every guest we have has some peace that has either spoken mm -hmm. to me or I know will speak to other people because um, of all the experience that I've had. And so, and sometimes they're not, you know, it's, it's funny, I was speaking with um, a flower farmer and I, I was, I'd been following them and I was trying to reach out to them to have them, you know, to, to do something with them. Mm -hmm. And they said, I asked, I said, do you listen to the podcast? Because I don't, you know, you don't know who listens because that's not public yes. information. Um, right. You just know that somebody listens, right? And so, I, and they said, yes, we do. We listen to, mostly we listen to the episodes where you're interviewing flower farmers. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, that's awesome. I, I understand you connect with that base. And I didn't really say this to the person, but I was thinking at the same time, I'm like, but this is the important thing is, and I even said this in the intro to my last episode with Triple Run Farm, that I may interview a photographer, I may interview a wedding planner, I may interview a flower farmer, I may interview a flower shop, I may interview any of these people. If you've got a creative business, 
Okay. It almost doesn't matter whether it's flowers or not, but of course, you know, we're all mm -hmm. flower lovers. So that's, that's the big yeah. thing, but almost anybody can listen to our podcast and, and glean something, whether it's a leadership style or a personal management style or how to focus on websites like we did a couple of weeks ago or how to get a sense of it's okay to be in this season of, mm -hmm. you know, that we're all shut down and how can we, how can we make the most of this bad situation? Um, you know, each episode tends to do this and it's, it always amazes me, you know, and that's the thing about it is, it's like, I know because I hear it. I get messages from people. I get emails from people, you know, that say, thank you so much for this episode. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like, it's, um, it's special. It's not, this, this is not, it's, it's more than just a job. I mean, now I do it full time, right? It's more than just a job for me. It's, it's mm -hmm. a way of helping people and serving people. And, yeah. and it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're a knitter and you knit sweaters, I mean, you probably can learn some things from our podcast. It doesn't matter. You know, it just really, mm -hmm. it, creatives have a lot of common challenges and creative people do. And, right. and I think, you know, when I think back and I like, you know, this last few episodes, I mean, every episode means something special to me, but sure. I would say that ever since the COVID situation, um, we, uh, you know, did an interview with Steve Moore from Sinclair and Moore. Um, mm. And we, and, and I mean, what a, a, an incredible human being, okay? What a, a person who genuinely can empathize with you and genuinely feels because he's done it all, okay? You know, mm. he's he's been someone who has worked 24 hours around the clock because he's he's been the person who made the cake, who did the flowers, who uh, maybe even altered the wedding dress. I mean, he's done it all, okay? He played music. I mean, it was just like, okay, you're just like a one man, you know, powerhouse. I'm like, how do you even do that? And he, and he said, well, well, he's like, okay, well, I was a lot younger back then and I maybe didn't need as much sleep, but I should have. But, you know, it's just kind of like, you, you can identify with this is someone who has achieved incredible success and notoriety yes. around the world, but yet mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you are, you know, he can relate to you. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you have that situation. And then we had um, Katie Davis and we've had, uh, you know, Gracie, um, Polson from Grace Rose Farm. You know, we've had these people that, you know, have built something from literally nothing, okay, mm -hmm. just because of their passion. And, yes. you know, so, you know, how many of us as creatives are challenged because, you know, we started our business because we're passionate about something, but then all of a sudden we realize, oh, wow, there's a lot of not fun stuff part of this. You know, we have to pay our taxes or we have to, you know, make sure we get our business license and, uh, you know, whatever those requirements are, wherever you live. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always amazing to me that those are usually things that we kind of struggle with. Right. And, and then like this week, we released our episode with Triple Ren Farms. Okay, so you think a flower farmer, somebody who grows amazing dahlia, um, somebody who sells, you know, thou I mean, tens of thousands of dahlia tubers who has workshops on their property and all this stuff. So we're sitting here doing an interview. And then she talks about, you know, that if you're really passionate about growing flowers, do it, go into it slowly. Maybe take the first year and just practice growing while you're learning the business side of it, right? And then as you kind of figure out the business part of it, then you'll be ready to really grow both as a business and flowers. Well, that's something that applies to anybody, right? Um, the wisdom of gaining that insight and the wisdom of, you know, let's, let's you know, just like us, you know, we took six months to put the foundation down for our podcast, you know, because we had so many technical things to figure out and editing things to figure out and, and how to, what's the best way to release it to the world. And, you know, all these things to figure out. And sometimes it's good to do that. So that's the point, I guess, is it didn't matter whether you're a flower farmer or not. I mean, incredible experience you can learn um, from the business side, you know, and I think that's, that's almost the benefit 
and you know, at first I really got, I struggled with the fact that I'm a big flower person. I love flowers. I love the color. I love the flash. I love the design. I love all of that. And I'm on a podcast where there's no visual element. And, yes. I, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such a handicap. Okay. I'm like, it's really easy to talk about flowers when I'm holding you know, hey, this is awful, but when I'm holding some flowers here, okay, it's, it's really easy. It's as easy to, exci- to get excited about an incredible oh, symbenium yes. stem. You know what yes. I'm saying? But when you're yes, just yes. audio, when you're just audio, it's kind of like, well, how do you connect, you know? And what came out of it was so much more. It, it's like, because we're not distracted by this, we can actually get to know people. We can actually get it's to hear. I'm it's sorry. More it's more yeah. pure, and you can more focus. focus. You can really focus, like on on just the words and the meaning what people are saying. And it's very important what what you said actually about passion. And I think a lot of people, uh, when they start a business, they they think about what can I achieve, how much money I can make. And I'm always saying you can achieve everything with one thing that is actually passion. And uh, we heard once somebody saying, passion is doing what you love and not considered work. And I think like one can see if somebody has passion and we can see this in your eyes, how you are talking about your podcast. This is passion. Yeah. It's amazing. And I think especially this time right now, if you don't, if you're not passionate about your business yeah. in a difficult time right now you have it even more difficult if you're not passionate about what you're doing because it's such a hard time and it's going to be still like hard for, for a few months to come unfortunately um so you 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 are in a better space even though maybe mentally a lot of people are not in the right space right now but if you do something really from the heart you're gonna survive this this is really yeah. something that i believe Mm, I agree. I completely agree. Tell us a little bit. I mean, we all know that America is hit one of the hardest uh, with COVID. And uh, we all feel very, very, very sorry. I mean, really, we, like, at least we, we always follow every day, like, what is going on in the world and what is going on in America, in Europe. We as European, obviously, we are also interested in what, what's going on there, what is going on in our own continent. And we sometimes, we, we can't believe really what's going on. But tell us a bit, like, about the, the flower industry, how the flower industry is actually coping with the situation or what is... How the implications yes. maybe that you predict are also having spoken to a lot of growers yeah. and um, what does it mean for exporting? What is your like price wise? Maybe just something that you can summarize where you can say, you know what, like, right now, this is really what I can see what is happening in the market. Sure. Well, you know, it was really scary there at the very beginning because when everything started canceling, <clears throat> nobody knew. It, are they going to, are, are, are clients going to actually cancel? I mean, you, you're in the event industry, you know, are they going to cancel? Yeah. Are they going to postpone? Are they going to reschedule? Are they going to downsize? Um, and I know that of course, where you are, um, it's going into fall now, right? I mean, you're on the Southern hemisphere, yes. so yeah, things are starting sense. to get a little bit, well, I don't know, do things get really get cool in South Africa? They do. They get cool in South Africa. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> I've actually seen snow. So, I mean, I know what happens. So, um, yeah. So, um, I, I feel like, you know, most, uh, most of the in- event industry, which I'll speak to that mostly, um, mm-hmm. you know, you have a dry spell through the winter holidays and then you get, start gearing up. And so when this hit, you know, a lot of businesses struggle because they've only, you know, they've been shut down, you know, they've not, maybe not completely shut down, but you know, the, the main wedding season was just getting ready to get ramped up. And then, and then before you know it, um, this hits. And so, you know, you kind of live off your savings, right. For those months where your cash flow is not as great. And then you gear up and then that's what carries you through the summer. So, um, 
that's hard. That's really, really hard because, you know, not all businesses, you know, have the cash flow to kind of sustain them through this. And then mm -hmm. as people reschedule, so, I mean, it, it's just, it's just a challenge. It's a huge challenge. And so I was really glad to see some companies pivoting and changing a little bit um, to try to do some sort of retail. I mean, a lot of event companies actually started as a retail business, some of them. And mm -hmm. so, you know, some of them going back to their roots of trying to offer That's that or, or find mm -hmm. ways to sell flowers for Mother's Day, for example, whether it's, you know, a no contact delivery or pickup or some mm -hmm. situation like that. And so, you know, a couple of months ago, when things were so clamped down and the, and it was like a stranglehold and you had all these amazing flowers being produced and not being able to either come into the country or move to the country because the trucking companies were closed and the, and the, and people were trying to, you know, fly flowers to people who wanted them, but hardly anybody wanted them. You know, there was, there was a handful, actually there's more than, there was many companies that tried to find some way to at least trickle flowers um, mm -hmm. to customers. And then those customers are finding ways to trickle flowers back out to their customers. And it, it, I think that helped. I think by keeping some of these chains moving, it allowed for a gradual progression of a lot of these companies to, um, to kind of ramp up in a mm -hmm. efficient, but yet safe way. And so now most wholesalers that I've spoken to are open. Uh, most wholesalers, mm -hmm. uh, you may not be, you may have to make an appointment. You may only be able mm -hmm. to pick up on the curb side, you know, you know, like mm -hmm. in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. may be able to have something shipped to you if you're not, you know, located near one via, you know, FedEx or Delta or some airplane or something. Um, you know, there's, there's, there are flowers flowing. Are they where, where they were? No, by no means. But there are flowers flowing. And I think this Mother's Day week, I know I'm so appreciative that the people I follow, the people I talk to, you know, they're all really trying to sell flowers or trying to market the product and they're shifting some of what they do. Um, I am seeing a trend um, towards people wanting to have a small intimate wedding now. Um, mm -hmm. I know I was on the phone with someone last night that, uh, they were, had a big wedding planned and now it's going to be, you know, like a 20 person wedding. Um, and then they're going to go ahead and do it. And they're just going to be very careful about it and, and follow all the rules and, mm -hmm. uh, with distancing and things. And then maybe the, in the fall, they'll schedule a big event, you know, a, a party, a reception, nice. something, you know, to celebrate. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a challenge, but I'm so excited to see flowers flowing again. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I, a lot of the people I follow, a lot of the people I talk to, you know, you can see that they're getting, they're getting peonies or they're getting uh, lilies or they're getting tulips. You know, they're starting to see, you see, uh, you know, for us, California products starting to show up and feeds all across the country. And so, you know, I feel encouraged by it. I mean, it's still a challenge, obviously. And I think in a lot of ways, we've been very fortunate that the local flower movement that's been growing in momentum over the past handful of years, I mean, longer than that, really, but we've really seen it the last maybe six, seven years. Um, that, that, that has really been a, a godsend. You know, we've had people, you know, well, you can't get a whole, you, you can't get the flowers one way or the other, you know, your local person may have something and may, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a florist, uh, I think it was two weeks ago and you know, they're still getting phone calls that people who want, you know, Oh, I have to have this, 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 and this. And it's kind of like, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, it doesn't work that way. Now. It used to work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way now. And so, yeah, what do you, exactly. do? you know, it's like, well, this yeah. is, you know, you can give us a color palette and we'll do our best. But we yes, guarantee sure. it'll be something beautiful, right? And yeah, exactly. you know, in a way, I think a lot of um, businesses, you know, floral businesses, that were having to actually creatively learn a new language almost because, you know, we're trying to sell something and, you know, from a beautiful, create a beautifully creative design as opposed to relying on these specific flowers that we have to use. And, and so yes. I don't know.
I don't know if any of that makes sense, but it's it's yeah, uh, it, it's it, been an it does. It does. And, and we we just like very very unexpected. Actually, we had like two hours ago we had a chat with uh, Italian uh, flower shop, one of the most beautiful flower shops in Milan, and she just. Like yesterday, she reopened after two months uh, because also Milan was very hardly hit by by uh, by the COVID. Sure. Um, and she said um, she opened and she just bought flowers. She doesn't know how many, but she just wanted to have the shop full because just for her own pleasure that she has actually the pleasure of having flowers again. And um, and I mean, for us particularly, that that was amazing because also since uh, lockdown um, until today, even Mother's Day ahead, there is no legal point of of um, actually selling flowers right now. Um, although there is a lot of confusion in our market at the moment, yeah. uh, but. Um, yeah, I think people need flowers. Uh, flower, we have this uh, very, um, like, uh, the situation that the, in the government uh, gazettes, it says all the um, essential goods uh, are, like, permitted to sell. And we say flowers are an essential good. And That's why... Me, like Everyone in the flower yes. industry feels that it's essential. And actually, when we have now more than seven weeks, no like flowers that were circulating, everyone could feel that they really missed work yeah. with flowers. And the joy that gives back to people when they look at flowers, the way how they smile at a house or a kitchen table just look completely different. I think we all also appreciate yeah. um, flowers much more, whereas maybe before, yes, it was a passion but it was also a job you know but now it's really also something that a lot of people are dying to get their hands on flowers again just to be creative and I think also what you said this time for creative for creatives themselves I think it's a great time to actually be creative because you have to deal with what is available locally yeah. right um, I, I mean you know so so whatever you you can get your hands on you just have to create and this also i think will set you apart in your industry from others the way how you can deal with what is available right now and not maybe go by certain recipes i mean it would be lovely also for us to have the peonies now or like you know things that we usually import and which are not currently available in the season but um, it, it's just it's just amazing like i think when when creatives can get their hands on it it will definitely show their creative side or well, it will define a totally new style for some people yeah oh absolutely i mean i know on one of my interviews um i want to say maybe it was steve moore's yeah we were talking about that because you know a lot of times uh necessity or um scarcity you know is the mother of invention right and so, yeah who knows? Who knows what what exciting styles might come out of this? Um, yeah. Or the thing that really excites me is what flowers have we walked by for years that make great cut flowers, and just because we've never tried them, we didn't know. And um, that's a that's a whole other thing, you know, for me. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely um, it's it's a it's a crazy time. I, you know, I know that for you guys, I can't even imagine um, to not be able to do anything for seven weeks. Yeah. And um, that, that just makes my heart break. But I, I feel too that, just like you said, Elfie, that, you know, people are going to appreciate it so much more. Um, I know I'm always great. I mean, obviously we're shelter in place here. Uh, we go to the grocery store because we have to like once, maybe every 10 days. And I'm glad to see people walking out with flowers. Um, I'm yeah. glad to see the grocery store has the flowers and I'm glad to yes. see them walking out with flowers. And, um, you know, it just, it, it does warm my heart because I feel like that's people trying to connect to nature. That's people trying yeah. to, um, you know, add some normalcy to their life, yeah. even if they never buy flowers regularly, you know, it's still people trying yes, to do it that. It became some somehow something like a pet, you know. You can even talk yeah. to them. Yeah, you see something yeah. grow. I think it it does something to your well being when you look at 
flowers, you just like you just in a completely different space. You you have something that is alive, that is growing, mm. that is yeah. something beautiful to look at. And I think people will actually like my 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 perception is the longer lockdown will take, the more actually when it's allowed, people will buy flowers yeah. because they are in their homes much more than ever before. And they want to make their homes pretty. They want to look at beautiful things. So I believe that for florists actually, or for corner shops or supermarket business, flower bunches are actually going to be a thing. Well, I hope, I mean, I really hope that the lockdown is not going to extend too much longer. But I think once this is open, it is actually a really good business for people. Yes. yes. Yeah, I completely me, agree. Yeah. Tell me, like, um, what, like, a lot of people um, say, like, with COVID, uh, they had or they have changed um, their business. Was it also impacting your business, like like the podcast directly, that you say, okay, I, I had to do something different or I wanted to do something different? Well, that's a great question. And I don't know that anyone's ever asked me that question, but the answer is that it has impacted the podcast industry. Um, we've been very fortunate, but overall, you know, People engaging with podcasts, you would think it would be up, right? Because people have more time on their hands. But I think mm -hmm. it's actually gone down. Um, now, I will say that we have, I mean, I would say we had about two to three weeks um, that things were, you could tell a difference. And I think it's because people's mm -hmm. habits have changed, right? I mean, like yeah. I listen to them, like I said at the beginning, in my car, driving back and forth to work. Or if I was working on something, I might do it. Well, if I'm not doing that commute, then maybe, you know, because I need to stay at home, um, maybe I'm not doing that. And so one of the things that we did to change a little bit is, of course, we've, we've been doing lives kind of like this, which has been fun. And we've been trying to do different things, not just interviews with people, but farm tours or garden tours and different different elements like that, so to speak. But then we also, through Zoom, we're doing... Uh, some of our interviews we started doing through Zoom. So if you wanted to watch my interview with Steve Moore, you can go to YouTube like we are now and you can go to the Flower Podcast. We have a channel and there's the video that we had with um, Steve. And so you can watch our conversation, um, which has been really great. And so, uh, so it's given us the ability to do some different kinds of connecting with our listening audience. Uh, yeah. But I will say that we can tell that people are now catching up on episodes. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we're definitely seeing downloads, you know, co go up. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. I mean, um, it's not something I typically go around sharing, but, um, you know, we, for a new podcast, it's, it is challenging to sometimes grow. Um, and to get the word out. And I feel like mm -hmm. because of our audience and because of our guests, um, it's been pretty great. I, you know, it's hard to imagine. We've done um, almost every season we've done, our audience is double. Wow. And I thought when we, when we finished season three, I thought there's no way we're going to double season three, right? Well, in season four, even though we had a dip, all right, we are completely on track to doubling again. And so, That's amazing. thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's really a testimony to the guests. And I think mm -hmm. it's, and I think it's, um, you know, I don't know. I care about people. I want to serve people. And I feel like that comes through. And, and I also think the different ways these new ways of connecting is also powerful, you know, whether it's like this, you know, doing, I yes. mean, it was so crazy because <laughs> when uh, Sylvia, when you um, messaged me, I was in the middle of a live that I Instagram live and I was just being spontaneous. And I was, and it was like, I even said, I mean, I've never done this before. I said, you know, if you're out there and you want to join me, go ahead and hit join. And so, you know, a nice lady from Arizona popped on and we chatted for five or 10 minutes. I, I didn't know her before, but you know, it's a cool way to connect with people. And she does flowers from her house and she does wedding bouquets and things like that. Well, then my dear friend, 
from um, Australia, Debbie, who has uh, Dragonfly Fly. I saw that. She, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah, I, saw I saw you that. come on. And so, you know, she and I have talked several times, and it was just fun to see. And I know she, if she's if, if she's no shy person, so she'll just jump on. And so she did. And so we were talking, and that was great. And then I saw you pop up while I was doing that, and I'm like. I know it's like two o'clock in the morning there. What is she doing on Instagram? <laughs> and and so, and that's when I messaged you back right away. And I was just like, well, I know she's up. If she wants to answer the phone, she'll answer it, I guess. And so <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's why I called because I know we had been kind of like playing tag there uh, and connecting yeah. for this. But You um, have to be a bit crazy in this <laughs> industry, I think. <laughs> Uh, and if you're not when you come in, you are when you leave. So it it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. And you know, I saw, you know, I, that's interesting that you mentioned this because when I saw her and I thought myself, okay, when he has somebody from Australia, I have to compete this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there must be someone from Africa as <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd have to do that earlier in the day for you because you should be sleeping. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have, I mean, this is also. I mean, we 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 don't personally usually also talk a lot about like our situation, like as such. But we are very stressed as well. I mean, in the situation that we are in, we have sleepless nights. We have staff that need our support. We have, I mean, for the last seven weeks, not sold a single yeah. stem. Yeah. Uh, so it is quite is quite a challenge also for us i mean we do this because we also are usually like very positive people at heart and we love to inspire others by just hearing their stories it's not so much about us mm. we want to actually really hear from others learn from others hear their stories um get the word out maybe even if we can support like you said also if we can bring someone on and we can and connect to people maybe someone who hears this someone who is speaking then we have done much more than, than we can do right now we can, because we cannot support ourselves right now in the way that we actually want to. Um, right. Nonetheless, I think every entrepreneur is really, I mean, hard struck. And we, we had that before, mm -hmm. um, the conversation that, that there is a certain curve that everyone goes through, you know. I mean, I think in the beginning, everyone was just in disbelief. No, like this is not happening like this is cannot be like this cannot not the whole world cannot shut down and then there is yeah. like slowly like a morning like phase where you're like my goodness what am i going to do how am i going to overcome this and then slowly you pick up your pieces you know and you try to rearrange and you see how you can actually like even in this moment of time make a difference mm -hmm. and and i think for us um the only way how we can make a difference right now is to reach out to the world and to yeah. bring also the, the world, world to, to South Africa, Africa and yeah. to Africa. We do not have only people from South Africa to listen, but a lot of neighboring countries, a lot of other um, African like florists and wholesalers and growers are listening in. And I think they just also need to hear stories, stories that not necessarily are always about COVID, you know, or about death rates or about like negative things, but to see a, a face like yours, to hear a voice, because also many of us are confined in their homes. They go shopping, they go maybe maximum to the doctor and that's it. Right. Um, so I think the whole social interaction game has also changed. So mm -hmm. it's nice to actually see you, I mean, we asked you to go into the garden, but um, like to see like how are other people living? What is the weather out there? You know, just really basic stuff right now has become so important. Yeah, to, to see also faces behind brands. You know, I think like that, that is what we said also before. Business is done by people, and we want to speak to people and want to show your face. And this is the our podcast you know this is we know this is maybe a little bit against the uh, against the podcast um, yeah. like like what we say but we just like believe that we want to see like you i mean you are a success story on your own we want to like show the people hey this is scott shepherd and he like initiated the flower podcast and it's just beautiful to see a face to a to a brand 
hey, here somewhere in Africa, there is somebody that picks up this idea and, and it is initiating something similar or for another, for another industry, maybe a podcast for, I don't know, for the leather industry or for whatever, you know. Yeah. I think this is, this is what we hope um, will be the outcome and we want to entertain a little bit our own industry. We want to show also the world that in Africa there's much, much more than just animals and maybe crime and maybe I don't know what people know about Africa but there's uh, there's business there's amazing creative people and we want to also bring them out to the world yeah. well I'm glad you said that you know I shared with you the other night you know I've actually been to Africa twice and once was to Kenya and I visited the rose growers there and uh, many mm -hmm. farms there. Uh, that was an amazing experience. And then I uh, went through South Africa to Swaziland, and and South. A I mean, it's a beautiful country, and right. it's it's amazing. Um, the people, just what you, I, you know, I'm excited for what you're doing because I feel like this library of videos you've created is something that. Um, isn't just like for your neck of the woods. It's, it's also, you know, your corner of the world. It's also for people around the world. And, you know, it doesn't, and that's the beauty of technology and the beauty of the day and age we live in. It doesn't really matter where you live. You can still impact people around the globe. And mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for you guys doing this. And I'm excited for, um, you know, just everything you're doing. It's really, it's really great. And, and I, you know, we'll, we're going to have to maybe next season we can get you on our podcast because it would be fun to, um, you know, to hear your stories and uh, everything. Once, 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 we're, once we're all doing flower stuff again. Right. So um, <laughs> that, that would be great fun. So, yeah. No, oh, and for us, it's an honor really also to have you like with us. And I have to be like quite honest. I always heard you, but I never even thought that like you could be like we could speak and, and you could take the time um, to speak to people from the other side of the world. So thank you so, so much for sharing also your time. Can you just also let people know maybe ones who had like still like flower podcast, like what is this? How can people access the flower podcast? Sure. Thank you for that question, because sometimes I forget to talk about that. And that's the important thing. <laughs> uh, I get excited talking about flowers and I forget these things. And so um, most people, you know, listen to a podcast on their phone, on their cell phone. But we do on our website, theflowerpodcast.com, you have to type in theflowerpodcast.com. Um, you, we have, you can listen right from our website. So if you don't have access through an app or something, that's an easy way to be able to listen and you can see everyone's faces and the photographs they show us. We have blog content, which is really great where we have just different things on that. Uh, we just started putting, whoops, I just lost my earbud. Um, we have different um, videos on there now because of things we've been doing through all of this. Um, but you know, most mm -hmm. people listen to their phone. And so if you haven't, like, if you listen to Spotify, we're on Spotify. If you go and you hit Spotify and you type mm -hmm. in the Flower Podcast, we come up. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get this content. If you have an iPhone, there's a there's an Apple Podcast app you can use. Uh, if you have Alexa, you know, in the States, Alexa is a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. We're on that. You just have to ask her to play the Flower Podcast. And so... I, I, I lost count how many apps were on. It's like a, just about every app, just about every podcast listening app is out there. You can find us. And, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I always tell people, you know, I love to hear from you. If you've got a question, if you're having a hard time finding us, you know, Instagram is a great way you can message me. Um, uh, you know, we have Facebook, which is great too. And, um, you know, we're at the far podcast. So, you know, it's both on Instagram and Facebook there. Uh, we'd love to have you follow us. We have great content. We do lives and, uh, yeah, I mean, we're just, it's like, we're, we feel like we're busier now than ever with all of this. Um, and it's exciting. And we've got some big things that we're working on coming down the pipeline here in a couple months. And, uh, yeah, so. Well, that's a good. What? Can you maybe say, I don't know, how, like, if you release 
interesting, like, like who, who will be one of your next maybe um, guests that you are interviewing? Uh, uh, is that something you can tell us? Well, I'm not sure exactly the order these are going to come out in, but we have an amazing interview. Um, I know because of the holiday this week. Sometimes on holidays, we replay a past episode, so we're doing that this week. Um, that mm -hmm. also allows people time to catch up if they're behind listening. And so and we've yes. seen that a lot. Of, we've seen a lot of that lately, so that's great. Um, I know that we have uh, Mindy Rice, which is an amazing designer here in the States. Um, we have Ariella Shazar, which is, if you know Ariella, she's incredible, um, just an incredible mm -hmm. human being. Um, now you put me on. So, oh, we're doing a, a, we had a great interview. Uh, and this probably doesn't really impact you guys, but uh, with the Alaska Peony Cooperative, and we're going to be releasing later, closer to the Alaskan Peony crop coming through. And oh, so, wow. That's uh, interesting. That's yeah. sure. That is. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I, I mean, have not to miss this. You have what? I shouldn't miss this. Yeah, no, that's no, going to be interesting not at all. for a lot of people, not most definitely. Great. I I finally want to say, like, because you mentioned Kenya, uh, like maybe this is an opportunity when everybody can travel again because we last year have initiated. Um, travel to farms in Kenya and we call this um, a rose safari. We go with one floral designer to one rose farm and we can visit like a garden rose farm in Kenya and we do dinner in the rose field. Um, if somebody wants to see like how this looked like on our Instagram, there's a couple of pictures and I think tomorrow we will have this farm on, uh, on Cape tomorrow i think right mm -hmm. i'm not sure and um and maybe if you like we would invite you to join us and have uh, be talking from kenya from the rose safari oh wow that would be incredible i would that would uh it's it's such an amazing place what an incredible experience yeah. to invite people there to do that um uh, I mean, and the people of Kenya is just the, the love for Africa, you know, yeah. I think for Africa and obviously for flowers, because I mean, this is what we do. And we have like two bonus points usually. Yes. And we just hope, um, yeah, traveling will be allowed soon. I mean, yeah. for lots of people, this is um, not only in the like event and flower industry, but this is yeah. one of the most essential things yeah. uh, these days. Uh, but if that's going to um, yeah. be lifted, then uh, we it want to schedule it for October, the first week of October. But everything is actually at the moment on hold as long as we know what travel like, can be or how travel can be. Yes. So we just want to be also ambassadors for Africa. And I know that there are a lot of interested minds out specifically also in the States who always like ask, what is Africa like? How does Africa look like? What does Africa taste like? How does Africa smell like? And we have amazing a garden rose farm, so you can come stop and smell the roses in Africa. And we go on safari, one of the most beautiful parts of Kenya in the Maasai Mara. Right. Wow. So amazing. we are excited actually what the future will hold for us. Yeah. So you guys are doing so much good yeah. stuff. I can't, I can't get over everything you guys are doing and from importing to weddings to live YouTube videos, safaris with roses. I mean, um, yeah, I feel that's like. That's the reason why we are up at two o'clock in the morning. You know, that's <laughs> how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. Scott, thank you so, so, so much. Actually, it was, we are. I can't believe we're already talking for an hour. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like for 15 minutes. Uh, thank you very much for the time. Yes, and we really, we said we were excited to talk to you. and We really meant it. We were really excited to talk to you. So thank you so much for your time. And keep well, keep safe. Um, and I hope also in the States, everything slowly will get back to a certain normal. And we would really love to welcome you in Africa. Yeah. Ah, I would love that. That would make me happy. And thank you so much. And uh, God bless. Take care. Thank and what, you. Whenever you call me at two o'clock, I've answered the phone. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye-bye.